there guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another retro RPG-ish thing. Because at the end of another week, and the end of another poll, we've got a very clear winner with The World of Warhammer, which isn't actually a role-playing book, but it's close enough for us to cover. Now as usual, I'll have a look at that on the desktop in a wee second, and I'll be back at the end of the video with some other channel-related news and some other poll-related news. But before I do that, I'd like to speak about my Patreons for a moment, who this week I've been advised have the kindest eyes. And staring into those luscious, gorgeous eyes, I see that kindness. Because they help support this channel. And I'm so grateful for that. But, if you'd like to join them, and you'd like to help the channel out, or you'd like to see these videos a week early, or you'd like to join our librarian status, where you get access to a bunch of stuff I've written, or you'd like to become a laird status, and become a real, honest-to-goodness, fake laird of Scotland, then our Patreon's linked to in the description down below. So if you check it out, it'd be very much appreciated. Anyway, let's have a look at the World of Warhammer. So, this is the Games Workshop World of Warhammer, the official illustrated guide to the fantasy world. Now, it came out from Carlton Publishing, it mentions on the spine there, in 1998. Now, while this isn't a book for the role-playing game, I found it very, very useful because I was running Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay in the early 2000s, when it was being published by Hogshead Publishing. And they were still publishing the first edition, which had originally been written way back in 1986. And with books coming out for Warhammer Fantasy Battle over the intervening years, the world of Warhammer had changed quite a bit. There had been a lot more added to it, which weren't in the rulebook. So I found this absolutely brilliant to dig into. Now, one of the first things I've got to mention is it's a slightly odd format. It's mainly the same as most books, or most role-playing books, but it is very slightly wider if we use this copy of Galaxy Guide Air 10 Bounty Hunters. But that doesn't make much difference. It sticks out slightly on your bookshelf, but that just makes it easier to grab, I suppose. It's not deep enough to make much of a difference. Now, onto the back cover. The World of Warhammer being an encyclopedia and exploration of the diverse lands, races, and cultures of the known world. It's magic, warriors, fantastic beasts, and strange creatures, including maps, histories, and timelines, and an examination of the iconography, mystical symbols, and languages thereof. In the world of Warhammer, you will see and read about every aspect of the known Warhammer planet, a complete fantasy game world inhabited by dwarves, High Elves, Chaos Dwarves, Skaven Undead, Wood Elves, Lizard Men, Dark Elves, Men, Orcs, Goblins, and others. This book also chronicles some of the greatest battles that have taken place in the world, describes many of the most famous heroes and villains, and gives a history, as far as it is known, of the incredible world of Warhammer. Now, the world had changed quite a bit, but it hadn't changed any of the essentials. So if we dig into it, we can see that it is all colour. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking book. It uses a lot of imagery from the various uh, Warhammer Fantasy splat books for the different races. It's very colourful and very well illustrated indeed. So we've got the foreword here. We've got an introduction. As I said, absolutely gorgeous artwork throughout. Welcome to the world of Warhammer, starting off with great catastrophe. So the warp gates collapse. The Slan were an alien race which were visiting the world and they got trapped here. And we'll go into them further when we get into their lands on the planet. But the history hasn't changed. It's still the same one introduced in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Um, the eternal battle between uh, law and chaos. Magic, the legacy of the old ones as the warp spilled into the world. Um, it can be manipulated through the ways of magic. The age of man. The old world. The lands of the humans mainly, but also some dwarves and elves. The new world of Lustria. And Nagaroth, so North and South America, basically. When we come onto a global map, we shall see. Then we've got a map of the Old World. Absolutely beautiful colour one. I used to have a giant version of this um, that I would use during play. But it's a very lovely map. Beautiful stuff. Then we're on to races of the Warhammer world. In the beginning. Going through the physical aspects. Getting together. You know, how they think, how they talk, what they build, what, how they're organised and what they believe. And their battle plans. So we start off with the Lizardmen. The most ancient species being descended from the Slan. We go through physical aspects. It details the Slan here, including picturing one. Because they look like giant frogs, really. With the Lizardmen warriors. 
Thesaurus, Skinks, Reproduction and Growth, Coloration. Going through all these details, fantastic stuff. Their home ter territory, Lustria and the Southlands. We can see a map here of the world, with the old world up here, uh, basically being Europe. And we've got North and South America, and Lustria is in South America. Large jungles, it's very much based on realistic South America, you know, the Mayan cultures, um, Aztecs and all that. The lizard men are very much based on that. But they ride dinosaurs, which is very cool. Something wasn't really delved into in fantasy roleplay at all. Um, as it said, you know, the sections on what they build, how they're organised, what they believe, their battle plans. It goes into what related topics, you know, what uh, shaped their culture. Then on to the High Elves, the Keepers of Balance. So going through the Elves, absolutely gorgeous, you know, the Sword of Cain and how they were corrupted somewhat. The Rise and Fall of the High Elf Empire. Their home territory of Althuan. I um, hope I'm pronouncing that right. This island, I'm guessing it's supposed to be kind of like Atlantis. A uh, great culture now getting forgotten about, but it's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, very crescent moon shaped. A more detailed map showing where their capital city is and the um, various elements of it. Because we've also got a dark elf city there. The island is split between the high elves and the dark elves. And said, you know, sections on their writing, what they build, how they're organised. Absolutely lovely art. And um, what they believe, battle plans. Then we've got the wood elves. These are the more common elves in the old world because they live within the forests. So we can see them, their territories in the uh, forest of Lauren. The creatures which are in these forests. Now... Again, how they think, reading and writing, what they build, their battle plans, um, elven war dancers. Then we're on to the dwarves, detailing the rise of their empire, where their cities are based in the World's Edge Mountains, on the very edge of the Old World. Um, what they build, all their great devices and weapons, because they're most technological of the races. Their battle plans. Then we've got the Empire, the greatest of the human civilizations. The empires of elves and dwarves may have waned, but the domain of man has yet to reach its zenith. Of the, all of the human civilizations of the Warhammer world, the largest and most powerful is the old world of realm simply known as the Empire. And uh, Sigmar, its patron god. And we've got a map showing the old world here with the Empire at the corner of it. The Moot, which is the halfling realm. Kislev, which is on the border with the Chaos Lands to the north. And then we've got Bretonia down here, then Altdorf, the Forest of Lauren, and Bretonia is over this side. That's what it showed it. Um, a city under assault by chaos and goblins and uh, orcs and that. The various uniforms of the soldiers of the Empire, their battle plans. And we've got Bretonia, the land of chivalry. These are sort of brave knights. Um, the Empire on the Edge, the Forest of Lauren, and Bretonia. Again, how they think, the reading and writing and all those things, their battle plans. And then we're through to Chaos, which, is, as I said, is right up in the north. We've got the Beast Men, the Dark Gods, Dragon Ogres, Minotaurs, Fell Creatures, Champions of Chaos. Um, Korn, the Blood God. Nurgle, the Great Lord of Decay. Zinch, the Changer of the Ways. And Slanesh, the Prince of Chaos. And then we're on to the Skaven, the Children of the Horned Rat. Um, these are obviously in the rulebook, but their culture had really been yet to be developed. They were just um, a monster in the Warhammer Fantasy rulebook. We go into the detail about the Warp Stone and how they use it. Physical aspects, their home territory, which is mainly under the ground. We've got the different clans, Clan Skyr, Mulder, Eshin, Pestilens the other clans, and then as with all the other races, how they think, what they build, how they're organised, and their battle plans. We've got the Chaos Dwarves. Now these were, I think, a fairly recent one. I don't remember much about them. But these are dwarves who have fallen to chaos. They're a bit um, Egyptian in their style. Very um, plaited beards and all that. 
and we've got their dark lands which are beyond the world's edge mountains and um, there's not a lot to these we get through those fairly quickly the dark elves which have obviously are the elves which don't wear much clothing they obviously come from a very hot country even though it's mainly north america and canada it seems to be their territory but they don't feel the cold typical northerners if that's not just a very british joke uh, black-hearted exiles um, we go through those, their dark magic, their appearance, their territory in Nagaroth, um, nicely named Sea of Malice. And we go through their ordinary sections now, how they think, reading and writing, what they build, and their battle plans. And then we're on to the undead. Well, these were very much part of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, but they're a lot more detailed, because they were the vampire kingdoms, and things down to the southeast of the map, basically. Where Egypt is in real life. And we've got skeleton legions. Talk about the physical aspects of restless dead. Vengeful spirits. Vampire legacy. The path to damnation. Their home territory. You know, the sour sea. Land of the dead. The marshes of madness. Wonderful names. And we go through how they're organised. Battle plans. And then we're on to orcs. And goblins. And brutal savage marauders. The orky boys. Um... One of the most iconic things in Warhammer Fantasy roleplay and battle. Um, in the beginning, their physical aspects, goblins, hobgoblins, snotlings, um, their home territory. They've sort of taken some of the fortresses from the dwarves in the World Edge Mountains. Different creatures, including ogres. Ogres are big, thick and belligerent, not unlike orcs. Nice picture of um, goblins along with some squigs, I think they're called. The war, how they're disorganised, their battle plans. And then we've got an A to Z going through different subcultures. So Amazons, a tribe of warrior women found in the Lustrian jungle known as the Heart of Darkness, believed to have descended from Norse Valkyries. Arabians, Beastmen, Black Orcs, Bretonians, Dark Elves, Dragons, Dragonogans, Dry uh, Dryads. Griffins, greenskins, going through all the terms used for the different races, and as I said, subcultures of those races, tree men, wraiths, wyverns. But the World of Warhammer timeline, so detailing how each of the cultures, so the lizard men had mainly, most of their culture way back in the past, and then slightly more recently. The high elves, again, in the way past. But when we come to um, the undead, everything's a bit more recent. Britonia is fairly recent indeed. Um, the Empire has a long history. Great events that shaped the Warhammer world. So the Great Catastrophe, it goes into more detail about that. The War of the Beard, the historic first encounter of the Empires of the High Elves and Dwarves. The Time of Woes, the War of Vengeance. The Serpent and the Rat, so the Lizard Men and the Skaven Rising. The Great War Against Chaos. And then we've got some of the highlighted characters. Heroes and villains. So, Ariel. Azag the Slaughtered. Um, Joseph Bugman. Uh, Kaliador, Dr the Dragon Tamer. Gotrek Gurnison, who is in a few of the uh, Warhammer novels. Uh, Karl Franz, the current Emperor. Morgenia Le, Fle Le Fay. Magnus the Pierce. Um, Marathi, Nagash, Sigmar himself. And we've got an index at the back. Uh, just detailing where we can find everything. It is a lovely book. Absolutely packed with information. Absolutely packed with great artwork. As I said, I have got a whole load of use out of this. Because while I wanted to run Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, I didn't want to be playing it in some old version of the game. A lot of my players played Warhammer Fantasy Battle and were aware of the world, and I didn't want to tell them things were wrong. So I used this to update my game. Now, I have no idea if there's a more uh, modern version of this. I have no idea if newer versions of Warhammer Fantasy Battle have changed the world beyond. I know there's the Age of Sigmar, which is a totally different world now. But this, to me, was a very, very useful thing for Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. Um, and just a lovely book to have. 
So that was the world of Warhammer, and that won the poll this week with a massive 39% of the vote. Absolutely triumphant. In second place was Rift's Book 12, Psyscape, which came in on 26%. In third place was the Soviet Vehicle Guide for Twilight 2000 on 20%, which is a good showing, and I liked seeing that. And behind them, way back at the end, was The Last Crusaders for Deadlands Hell on Earth on 8%, and Hidden Agendas for Aeon Trinity on 7%. Kind of sad that those rarer games are kind of forgotten about, but we'll get around to them eventually. Now, as usual, the poll's been cleared out, and we're going over to a Retro Adventures one. But this time, we're recently I'm putting in adventures that I've never put in a poll before. Well, I've only got a limited number of books, so I'm going to have to repeat things. But I've decided to put in a bunch of adventures which have lost the polls against one another to force you to choose one of these ones that I really want to... Uh, cover. So in first place we've got Judgment Day for the Judge Dredd role-playing game. Now I covered the other adventure, because there are only two for Judge Dredd, uh, a few weeks ago and it was a really great adventure and I loved covering it so it'd be great to cover Judgment Day. Next we've got the Nightwalker The Villa Affair for Millennium's End. Now I'm a massive fanboy for Millennium's End, I think it was an absolutely great game with some fantastic ideas and so well done. So I'd love to cover this adventure book of two adventures for it. We've got The Last War Hulk for Alternity. Now again, while I'm a recent convert to Alternity, for some reason I picked up this adventure in, when did it come out? 1998. I picked it up and it's been in my collection since then. I don't know why I bought it. But something caught my eye, so it'd be great to cover it and see if that catches people's eyes as well. Then we've got Operation Rapid Strike for the top secret game, way back from 1980. One of the oldest adventures in my collection, and for a game I don't have as well, so it'd be great to cover it. And finally we've got Out in the Black for the Serenity role-playing game from 2006. Now Serenity didn't have much out for it, and it got quickly replaced by Firefly, but it'd be a great to cover this adventure, especially as it comes from some fantastic role-playing talent. In other channel-related news, well I mentioned last week that I'd been going to make a Satanic Panic video, including footage from the 1980s Tom Hanks movie Maces and Monsters, but I'd actually received a copyright strike on the channel for using a clip of the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves trailer in one of my videos. Now obviously the video that it was in, I was actually talking about the trailer and commenting about various elements within that, which is a legitimate fair use. But I appealed against that and they rejected that. So I once again appealed further, actually t risking losing my channel. Getting a proper copyright strike would be the first step to me losing my channel. But I thought it was worthwhile fighting for this right. And they have finally released it. I got news yesterday that Paramount Pictures have actually released the copyright claim on my video. Which is good because I now know how this works and I can actually use footage from movies as long obviously as I am using them under fair use. So that's a nice thing. And will let me move on. One of the things that amused me, as I mentioned in the video last week, I'd been amused that they'd used a pirated download of the movie as their source file for identifying what videos on YouTube were using footage from the movie. But I was also amused at their rejection of my claim this week when I received that news through. That they said that my video, which is two minutes long, includes a 20 second clip of their movie, served the same purpose as their entire movie. So apparently Paramount Pictures don't have a lot of faith in their movie if some random idiot on his two minute long video getting, I think I've got about 270 views on that video, is of equal value to their entire movie. I don't think that's what they meant, but that's the box that they tick to say. That I basically included all the good parts of their movie in my two minute long video. Anyway, with that out of the way, I can actually go back to creating a satanic panic video based on mazes and monsters and some other stuff. But this week, I'm actually going to be doing a rules breakdown of a game that I've written and put up on DriveThruRPG. Now, I know this is me publicising myself, but I've looked at other people's rule systems and I've broken that down so it seems only fair to do my own. Another news, over on the website, RPGGamer.org, I've been working my way through the latest Vader comics, catching up with them and putting stats up on the website for them. 
and I'm going to move over to the Vision Season 2 series and go through statting those out because I already reviewed all the episodes when the series was released. Um, apart from that, the Discord has been very quiet lately. There's just been a few conversations in there. But if you want to come in and you've got any questions, I can be reached through there and I am responsive, even if I'm maybe a bit slow. I apologise for that. It's just kind of the way things are at the moment. Apart from that, I can't think of anything. I've been wittering on for ages, so I suppose I'd better shut up and say goodbye. So, as always, most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.